Ja, vi har pratat tidigare idag om att vara uppkopplad jämt, att hänga med i alla flöden och att ständigt uppdatera vår status. Eh, och att det kan leda till stress även om Johanna Nylander som jag pratade med tidigare sa att det är inte så stor risk som vi kanske befarar utan det är faktiskt vi själva som ganska mycket kan reglera det där och välja när vi är uppkopplade, på vilka kanaler och vad vi bestämmer oss för att kommunicera då. I den delen av samhället som jag rör mig mycket i så pratar vi mycket eller pratas det mycket om mindfulness nu. Det är ett väldigt trendigt ord och det handlar egentligen om att vara närvarande. Och vi var lite inne på det förut när Sue Charman Anderson pratade om vår liksom obsess kring vår e-post. Att vi är på den hela tiden och kollar var femte minut i princip. Vad har vi fått något nytt? Och då kan jag fundera lite hur närvarande är vi i det vi gör. Precis som hon sa, det tar de där 64 sekunderna från att vi har kollat e-posten till att sen få tillbaka tanken till vad gjorde jag innan och vart, vart var jag egentligen på väg. Så frågan är vad kan vi tjäna som personer och som yrkesverksamma genom att fokusera på det vi verkligen gör. Och nu ska vi göra ett nytt sånt lite spännande hopp i programmet. Vi har bjudit in en kille som är expert på närvaro, vågar jag påstå. Daniel Strauser som är yogalärare på Yoga Kendra ska komma hit och hjälpa oss att förklara och lite grann visa vad närvaro är så att vi vet skillnaden och kan känna den. Så jag ska ta fram en mikrofon till Daniel så får han komma fram och riktigt vad som ska hända nu det vet inte jag. Så kom hit Daniel så får vi se om du vet. Välkommen. Tack. Spännande att vara här, eller hur? Mycket spännande. Ja. Jag har ingen aning om vad som ska hända. Det här är, det är lite, vi har gjort det här en gång förut, men då kunde man rösta. Nu kommer ingen ha möjlighet att rösta vad vi ska göra. Underbart. Ja. Så att närvaro, vi är här och nu, och du får tala om för oss vad vi ska göra. Hur lång tid har jag på mig? Ehm, om vi säger att du ska vara färdig till tio över senast. Perfekt. Mm. Daniel Strauster. Tack. In a horror movie, when you want to increase the sense of presence, they turn up the background sound. The crickets, the wind. So can you hear the background sound? The sound that has been here all along? Not one sound. That sound in which all sounds manifest, or like a record, like an old vinyl record you put the needle on just before the first beat comes, you hear something. What is that? You all use computers. If you have 15 programs running at the same time, how efficient are you? You have ACDC running on your Spotify, loudly, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> Then you are 
fixing up a picture in Photoshop while using Word and you have your mail program running on it at the same time. Everything's going on. Even if you have a new computer, it starts to run slow. You start to work inefficiently. So you buy a better computer. But you can't buy a better mind. How many programs are running in your head right now? I bet you were thinking when I was silent in the beginning. I bet you're thinking right now. Whatever I say has to penetrate through those filters in your head. Whatever you see, hear, feel, whatever you can sense through your senses has to penetrate the filters of your mind. So what about being present? We don't see the present moment. The present, present, like a Christmas present, you can open it up. Inside of it you find a presence. That is your true self, not your intellect, not your thoughts or feelings. Something much bigger, extremely beautiful, resting peacefully everywhere at all times. By centering yourself regularly, not once every 15 years, By returning to that center again and again, you tap into tremendous power. The computer you use has more power than the computer they had when they shot up the first rockets to the moon. But what do you do with it? Yes, so you don't need more power, you just need to use what is here. But what is here, what is now, you have to look at it and be patient. Have to, have to, lots of have to, if you want to. If you don't want to, you can just be happy, you can relax. But we can do a little test. If you please, move your back free from the back of your seat. If you move a little forward and both your feet on the floor, and both your hands on your knee. Don't use, don't lean to the side, just sit straight. This is called sitting up, not sitting down. When you sit up, you're present. The spine is straight. That means the channels, the nervous channels in your body are open. That means you're more attentive. When you look at it, the spine with the brain, that's the central nervous system, the very core of your being, the sperm that once swam around in your father's scrotum, <laughs> that is now sitting straight. It's like an antenna. Yes. And on many levels you perceive everything as coming in through the sense organs, but subtle Inspirations also come to the antenna. Anyhow, now it is straight. And there are two worlds. There is the outer world that we know so well. But behind your closed eyes, there is the inner world. And you interpret the outer world through the inner world. So we look at the inner. So you can just close the eyes if you want to. But don't stop looking. When you close the eyes, you can actually start to look. It's like you lower the screen, the cinema screen. Then you actively look into the back of your eyelids. In the same way, you don't have to listen to the sounds around you anymore. Try to listen inside your ear.
and you don't have to feel the world around you either. You can feel the world inside. Perhaps you can feel heat, warmth, pulsate in your body. We call that life. You're the lucky one. So by returning to our center, let's do that now. All you have to do is to let go. It's like a computer, when you don't use it, it automatically shuts off. You see, there is one thing that doesn't shut down, never. And that is your breath. So you can feel the breath. You don't have to pull it. The body knows how to do that on its own. Just feel the inhalation fill you up. Very fresh. There is some tension, some lingering stuff in your head. Feel it just melting away from you with the exhalation. It is kind of as if you're sinking into the present moment with each exhalation. Really feel the exhalation. It's quite lovely. Letting go of all that tension that tends to build up during the day with each exhalation. You might see that your mind is not quite going with this program. The mind might think this is a lot of crap. Or the mind might try, but it's hard. All this stuff bubbles up. Sounds distract. The outer world keeps knocking for your attention. So you need some discipline. To focus. Without focus, what can you do? Just feel the floor under your feet. Feel the seat below you. Feel the straight spine. Feel the breath. And try, just for one minute, not to think. Try to stay with the feeling of this moment for one minute.
still actively looking at the back of those eyelids. Aware of breath or maybe something else. Just you open the eyes and relax. You can sink back into your seat. There are different ways to experience everything. I experienced this room from up there before. It was very different from this place. You can experience life through a lot of thoughts running around. Or you can experience life through another place, a more silent place, a calmer place. And you will see that it's very different. If you want new ideas, you want to make new connections, you want inspiration. Where does inspiration come from? Where does energy come from? We tend to seek everything outside of us. But really, the inner is the primary. This wonderful building, where did it come from? First this was in someone's mind, then they drew it on a piece of paper, then they built it. But it comes from the mind first. Then we manifest. So spending a little time inward, focusing within, connecting. We see something beautiful that behind our thoughts and programming and all that stuff, real inspiration comes through intuition from a higher source. We don't have to talk about God and stuff. I like to talk about the presence in the present moment that you really are. To establish more of a contact with that is highly beneficial, no matter what you do. Maybe. But I should warn you, yes, by actually relaxing and starting to listen, you might seriously mess up your life. <laughs> Things that seem really important tend to fall away. You don't take stuff so seriously anymore. So what if you didn't check your email five minutes ago? You can do it when you come home. You know? It's all about being present. If you're not present, if you're not connected with the presence in the present, you're like my first computer I got in 1995. My mother, she didn't use hers. She, bought, she could buy it cheaply from work. But we had no internet connection. Talk about a boring computer. You couldn't do anything with it. Just some programs were inside. Patience. Or the Wadlers Street program. You could use a CD and put it in and, you know, get a funnier program into it. But when you got internet, my God, did the world open up or what? You could connect all other humans and everything. I'm not here to convince anyone, but I personally know that when your thoughts stop and you're simply present, you are connected to everything. Still, science is baffled about how could some ancient cultures know some things that we know first now with our powerful instruments. Obviously, they, they, they didn't have them.
Well, they were connected. You are connected. And imagine if you yourself connect, then what can you not do with the media we have today? So get online, be happy. Hmm. Normally I have a 10 hour introduction, so this is a little difficult for me. <laughs> but uh, thank you for having me. Och tack så väldigt mycket Daniel Strausser. Tack, tack, tack.